Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Arrows Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist with a doctorate in human sexuality, and I have my own practice called Arrows Coaching. That's EROSCoaching.com. Today, I have a guest who managed to get on today. The last time we tried, it didn't work for some weird reason. And because the show is always live, it can be challenging. Today's show title is called Animated Sex, The Spirituality of Eros. Although there has never been um, in the history of mankind more visual sex and general information about sex readily available, many people suffer from low libido and general disinterest in sex. Sexologists usually try to cure this with even more information and concentration on sex. And for many people, that may be helpful because they have no words of their own to articulate their sexual needs and desires. But there are those for whom this does not work before they suf- because they suffer from a kind of sex poisoning. This can only be cured by going back to the roots which aren't anatomical, technical or visual, but archaic and spiritual. Hmm. So sex just as sex quickly becomes empty and shallow if the connection to arrows gets cut. And arrows is not just about this chubby little angel with bow and arrow, uh, also known as Cupid, but is the god of co-creation who emerged self-formed at the dawn of creation. Arrows was the driving force behind the generation of new life in the cosmos. So today we have Jacob Pastat. Past Tata, uh, who will be discussing his importance for cultivating polarity, nurturing creativity, and developing spiritual connectivity, connectivity with life to discover our full sexual potential. And we will be delving into astrology, sex magic, qigong, tai, tantra, and the Judean concepts of Animus and Anima. So Dr. Jacob Pastata started as a very spiritually interested teenager, delved then into cultural anthropology, developed a taste for sexology while doing research at the Kinsey Institute for Research in Sex, Gender and Reproduction, wrote his doctorate thesis on hardcore pornography and the constraint to self-constrain mechanisms of the civilizing process it is entangled in. The question was, why were sexually explicit pictures only developed as an entertainment medium in the post-industrialized westernized western societies? And so he got his PhD in education at the Hamburg uh, University that's in Germany and uh, finally became uh, ABS uh, certified clinical sexologist at the American Academy of Clinical Sexology in 2003. He's been teaching and tutoring there for 15 years while doing research, media work and sex, couple and life counseling as president of the German Society of Societal Scientific Sexuality Research. And he's been uh, producing, organizing and uh, prestigious biannual conferences and so he has a lot of credentials and um his website includes sexology that's uh, s e x o l o g i e dot o r g and uh many other things about him so I'll, I'll share more uh as we go on with the show so welcome to the show hey welcome it's great to be in touch with you <laughs> thank you so much so it was really a, a, hand, a, a handful, a mouthful, um, uh, explaining about today's show. So, so, so tell me more. You are saying that um, uh, people with libido issues and not interested in sex, 
uh, sexologists are guilty of giving them more information and I guess basically confusing them. So you said that there's a cure. So what is the cure? Uh, I think uh, the cure is um, to go back uh, to uh, a very old um, uh, approach uh, to all things sexually. Um, you, you see, um, we are accustomed uh, in the Western world to see everything uh, through the glasses of uh, consumerism. Uh, everything is just there to uh, uh, put your hands on, uh, on and and to consume it. Uh, but when you look uh, at uh, the uh, different traditions and religions uh, we have in this world, you always find that sexuality was something not just for fun, but was also regarded as something holy, as something connected uh, with deities and also something which uh, in, in involved, uh, involved uh, uh, some kind of awe. And um, you, you so can... So you're saying I that think, we need to recognize... Yeah, go on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we, 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 we need to recognize again that uh, sexuality um, uh, has something uh, to do with with worship, um, it, when when you when you are sexually active, it is not just a, a pleasure thing, which is fine of course, uh, but it is also uh, a force that connects you with every living being in this world. You know the fascinating thing is for about one billion years there was no sex although there was life on this planet. Uh, there were one, one full billion uh, years, only single cells divided themselves and reproduced that way. There was no sex going on. Only after about one billion years, some of those single cells thought it would be a good idea to throw together uh, one's genes and develop something new. And this is the birth of the birth. Uh, before, it was just a, a, a kind of very boring reproduction. But as soon as you have two forces involved in such a process, you have a struggle, you have a fight. Because from that point on, it's not just something one single cell does for itself, it is something where two cells have to figure out what are the best genes to put into a new being. And this is so amazing uh, because this is the creation of something new, not the procre procreation of something old, which the single cells did, but the creation of something totally new. And in between a very short time with regard to the age of the world, all the life we see today exploded into a variety which is just mind-boggling. That's beautiful. I really love what you're sharing with me. <laughs> Thank you. It is, and, 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 and you see, so it is actually devaluating if you regard sex just as a as an consumer's item. Uh, uh, and uh, I think we, we have to go back to realize that sex is not so much something you can consume, but now it becomes interesting, something that consumes you. Does that make mm. sense to you? Yeah. Okay. It does. Just, just uh, sh shoot your questions, whatever it is. <laughs> yes. So I, I yes, yeah, so I, I love what you're saying about. I'm just really letting that soak in. <laughs> Sex is not uh -huh. something you consume, okay. but something that consumes you. Uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and um, you see, um, uh, gods are not just those uh, nice pictures you see. 
uh, but as uh, especially the psychology of C.G. Jung uh, found out, are actually forces that are much older uh, than, than our civilization. Uh, they are complexes of all what we think important. And this importance uh, is not necessarily harmless. It is not necessarily just um, uh, uh, funny or nice or, or, or easy to address. Usually, gods are, are something who have also a terrifying aspect. And I think uh, everyone knows that feeling um, when sexual lust is overwhelming you. Um, you don't really know what is going on with you because it makes so little sense. Uh, even the most smart people in the world are uh, again behaving uh, like, uh, like, like, uh, like, like teenagers again. They are driven uh, by this sexual force. Uh, the, the Jewish have that wonderful saying, when the schmuck stands, uh, when, when the penis uh, is erected, uh, the brain stops thinking. Uh, and this sounds funny, of course, but actually it is awesome in the old meaning of the world. It is something which creates awe. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So uh, let's continue this after the break. Okay. Bye. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by Rain and this station. You are listening to Arrow's Evolution on the Om Times Radio Network. And you can share this show with your friends right now by going to the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you'll be able to listen to the show without ne needing to download any app. Today we are talking about animated sex, the spirituality of arrows, and uh, this is the first time somebody is actually talking about arrows the way that uh, Dr. Jacob Pastata is doing, and uh, he's German, and he has a lot of uh, credentials. He's uh, very experienced, and um, he started off doing research in the Kinsey Institute for Research in Sex, Gender, and Reproduction. In case you don't know about this, this is actually the pioneer uh, institute when it comes to sexuality in America and so he studied there and uh, did his uh, doctorate uh, thesis and uh, got his PhD in education became a certified clinical sexologist in 2003 started teaching and lecturing there while doing research media work sex and uh, couple life counseling as president of German Society of Society, so, social scientific sexuality research. 
and he's been uh, organizing biannual conferences of DGSS. And um, so he does, since uh, 2014, uh, sex, sex uh, counseling for binational couples in English and German via Skype. So you you know you can reach out to him. And uh, he has several websites. So I'm just going to say one of them, which is uh, what I announced earlier in the show today, which is Sexology. Um, that's S-E-X-O, sex, O, sex, <laughs> sex, so, okay, sorry, I'm going to just try again. So it's S S E X O L O G I E dot O R G. So right now he's the editor of a German English book series, Sexuality, Crosswise with Springer Science, and is writing a book on the development of German sex education. So do uh, check him out. And uh, he has a new website that he will launch very soon, uh, or maybe it's launched already, called liveyoursexuality.com. That's L I V E. And he has a Facebook page that's Arrows Arising with an A. So, yes, so just before break, we were talking about the importance of returning back to the sacredness of um, arrows. So, uh, is there anything else you'd like to elaborate on, Dr. Jacob? Uh, yeah, there, there is indeed, um, because uh, uh, for creating uh, awe and respect for sexuality, I think uh, it is uh, important to realize that uh, really all cultural and religious traditions uh, see sexuality and spirituality in a very strong connection. Unfortunately, this link was severely cut when monotheistic religions made a leap for the mind only, degrading the body and its experiences to a machinery that is just supposed to work. What we experience today is what a Jungian psychoanalyst called the revenge of Aphrodite. I think uh, you, you, you know Aphrodite, that's uh, the old um, Greek and uh, Roman goddess uh, of love and lust. Yeah. And this revenge of Aphrodite uh, uh, is, is perfectly presented in what we see in sexualized advertising. Uh, it is always mm. titillating. Mm. It is filling our mind with unrealistic clutter of what sex is supposed to be and to look. And I'm absolutely sure uh, Aphrodite uh, in uh, her place uh, on the uh, uh, Mount, mountain Olymp uh, in Greece has hysterical fits of laughter watching all of those men with their palms down in front of their smartphones or computers, frantically masturbating and hunting for pictures that might still uh, give them some, some feeling of sexual excitement. Um, because uh, what, what you see there, single men uh, not having sex with, with partners, but, but only masturbating to, to a kind, kind of... Um, uh, fantasy pictures uh, that is just the same uh, what you see with those ancient uh, satyrs, uh, those goat-like old men uh, which are running with huge erections um, behind and after beautiful and sexy young nymphs uh, and those nymphs are laughing at them because actually they are never able to reach them and they are always hunting uh, for the real pleasure of sexuality which they can't, can't reach. An even worse picture is that god uh, Priapus uh, with an even bigger erection uh, who gave uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, terrible condition of Priapism is its name uh, which is that you have an erection that doesn't go away, which sounds like uh, paradise, of course, but when an uh, erection doesn't go away, unfortunately, the penis will die uh, because it's not longer able uh, that the blood flows through the penis. You all know that the, that the penis has to go limp from time to time so that the blood can flow through again because the erection is caused 
by blood staying in the penis tissue. Yeah. And 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 there you see uh, how how dangerous it is to pursue sexuality uh, only as a as a means of 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 lust without its its deeper meaning uh, in the spiritual uh, sense uh, that there is something really holy and sacred going on. Mm. I, I know the, yeah. those are ideas that are, are uh, so so contrary to our perception of sexuality. Uh, I, I always wonder where the idea was uh, coming from in the first place that sexuality is something uh, comparable to eating uh, or, or or sleeping, which is in some way okay um, uh, because you always can re- refine it. But sexuality is much more than that, because with uh, sexuality, uh, you have a tool uh, at your hands, uh, which you can use for connection uh, to your partner, but also uh, to use as a tool of connection with your inner self. And I think to understand what is going on, you have only two ways. Either you read a lot of uh, Greek and Latin legends, uh, where sex is uh, is, is a uh, plays a tremendous part um, in in what is going on uh, between gods and human beings, uh, or you have uh, to uh, look into the techniques tantra or Taoism. Uh, provide uh, because uh, in these traditions uh, there was always the attempt uh, to use sexuality as a medium to enrich all of you. So the the big problem is when you isolate uh, sexuality and only have it as a kind of uh, of drawer, uh, you think you can open and shut whenever you're, you think it, it, it would be good, then you invite this revenge of Aphrodite, um, which will only titillate you, but very soon will make all the lust go away. And uh, the strange thing is that today we are um, uh, bombarded uh, with with sexual images, with sexual ideas, but still at the same time, uh, where we liberated sex, we also made it into a consumer's item, and more and more people experience uh, no lust at all. And so this, I, I don't, I don't know what could be more revenge than that, that you get what you lusted for. But then you lose the lust for it. Makes that sense. Yes. So what you're saying is honoring the sacred that is behind sex. It's, it's, it's very helpful. It's, 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 it's uh, a very healing. I think too, too many people live their sexuality on the level of, of, of teenagers. Uh, I, I think, Martha, you also know uh, that many people are always uh, a kind of nostalgic when it comes to sex. They always long for the good old times when they were teenagers or when the, they were in first love and think this is uh, how sexuality always should be because it was... Um, an overwhelming experience, of course, you know, teenagers are able to masturbate five times a day uh, and uh, uh, don't find it boring. Um, but when you are growing uh, and, and, and when you are getting older, uh, it is your responsibility uh, to realize that your sexuality has to grow with you. Would you agree? That's very important. That's beautiful. Thank you. I'm, I, 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 this is why I enjoy 
uh, being in your show today so much because uh, I, I think um, uh, that your concept of, of errors uh, is exactly the same. Uh, it, it is, uh, 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 errors is so much more than just sexuality. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm glad so you, when I um, uh, go when on. I decided to call when I decided to call my company Arrows, first of all, as a spiritual person, always been fascinated with Greek mythology, and um, I really uh -huh. recognize the power that is behind our sexuality, Wonderful. and um, that um, sex sexuality and the lust and the power that we feel around our sex uh, is a part that shouldn't be confused with love and um, uh, in calling my company that uh, really yeah. was um, making a very bold statement and in fact I was told many times by many people including a psychic that I went to that I had to change my company name and I refused and of course I probably <laughs> suffered the consequences but that was very important to me extremely important to not make any apologies for arrows and so even yes. this show is uh, called Arrows Evolution. Yes. Uh, so, so, Thank you so for the opportunity are, to explain. Okay. Go ahead. Ah, um, I thought we were on you for uh, for the next break, uh, but but uh, ah okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we have a break and we'll come back and uh, speak more with Dr. Jacob Pastor Pasta. Pasta. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Lori Walker. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OMTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in the beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. Today we are with Dr. Jack Tatar, and um, he is um, the editor of German English book series Sexuality Crosswise with Springer Science, and is writing a book on the development of German sex education. So today we have a German, basically a German sexologist with us, who is highly experienced, highly trained, and. Um, Really, such a privilege to have him. So he has several websites. So uh, Dr. Dr. Jacob, if you can, um, please uh, uh, announce okay. the websites that you have. You can find more uh, about myself and about the German Society for Social Scientific Sexuality Research, which is based in Düsseldorf in, in Germany, uh, on our association website. Uh, it is sexology.org, uh, which is spelled a little different than usually because it's not written with an Y, but with an I and E. Uh, so it is S E 
X O L O G I E dot O R G. Uh, when you want to look up the DGSS, uh, and it's usually worth to look at our website because we have uh, biannual uh, international conferences uh, where we honor the most important uh, sexologists with uh, the famous uh, Magnus Hirschfeld uh, medal, which is named after the founder of sexology. Yes, uh, you will be amazed it was uh, uh, a German or uh, actually a couple of Germans who developed the field of sexology. They were German Jews uh, who were interested uh, in sex so much that even uh, before the First World War, at the end of the 19th century, so 150 years ago, um, thought it a good idea to create the new field of sexology. But you can also find something about me uh, at uh, uh, my uh, Facebook um, website, uh, just uh, look um, for uh, Live Your Sexuality Written Together. together. Uh, that's my channel on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I will keep you posted on the newest developments in sexual science. But now it's uh, me who has... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a question to, to, to Martha again. I think it's so amazing, so so uh, uh, in, incredible uh, that uh, uh, a Chinese woman from from Singapore is interested in 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 Greek uh, and 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 Latin religion and mythology. Uh, uh, how the, how did 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 it uh, come that you 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 found out about uh, those aspects? I, I, I really have no idea why I'm so interested in it. Um, okay. uh, I, I think I'm very interested in all things that are ancient um, because it's, it's where we came from. And so yes. when I learned about Cupid, then, of course, I was very interested in, like, who's this little angel lookalike that has wings and shooting people with bows and arrows. And uh, later realized that um, the Greek call him Eros, and so that's. Yeah. I'm I'm also very fascinated with Victorian sex, <laughs> like uh, how uh, the kings would have uh, all their mistresses, and uh, they would have um, all these people wearing big gowns, and so I I study yeah. a lot about King Henry's and his many wives. I I read a lot of these um, things in my free time, and and I guess I'm just very fascinated with how ancient people uh, have sex. And I often think I'm uh, born in the wrong era. I wish I was um, um, in the Victorian times. And I I think it has something to do with um, femininity, you know, because back then women uh, had uh, fewer choices in terms of careers and also in terms of uh, um, money. And so they were very de- dependent on their beauty and charm in order to hook the right man. <laughs> and so I was very interested in that that aspect of being a woman. So okay. that got me very interested in all these things. Uh huh. Yeah, it is. Uh, you, you, you know, one one of the smartest uh, things I've ever read uh, was from a um, Roman author who said, "When you don't know what happens before your own birth." Uh, when you don't know history, you will always stay a child, because only when we know about history, um, we we can uh, uh, grow uh, not only as individual, uh, but uh, uh, as, as as human beings, because uh, it is uh, our history. Uh, of course, it is important to be an individual, um, but actually, we are. Um, not so far different from a beehive. Uh, we all are much more when we work together, when we cooperate. And that also means drawing from the rich sources uh, of, of former times. And um, you, you know, right now, there are so many exciting um, discoveries uh, in history. Uh, that are just amazing. We always thought uh, that the Asian cultures and the antique uh, cultures, the ancient cultures of uh, Rome and, and uh, Athens, 
were quite differently and, and developed quite separately. But now we, we learn more and more that there were actually connections. Well, why shouldn't there be connections? Because there was always uh, the Silk Street. And um, on the Silk Street, not only silk traveled, but also people, monks, um, uh, people who knew something. And so it seems that many ideas we have in the West developed in the East, and some of the ideas of the East developed also in the West. So we are, they are all part of our family history, if you want to say it that way. <laughs> mm, that's beautiful. So I just want to do a quick summary of all the things that you shared today, uh, so far in today's show, and I hope I, I do a good summary. So basically, okay. just before the break, uh, Dr. Jacob was uh, sharing about how in Greek mythology um, that, you know, we have this um, bigger, this god with this uh, big erection who doesn't go away and he's laughing at humans because we know that when we keep chasing for this pleasure and we can't reach it, uh, this um, last uh, is dangerous dangerous not because sex is dangerous but because this last uh, where sex has no deeper meaning uh, and, uh, and we have have you end up feeling empty so uh, Dr. Jacob was suggesting that what we can do is learn by uh, besides le uh, appreciating from Greek and Latin being able to understand the tremendous power of sex and also in Tao and Tantra how he's learned that the use of sexuality as a medium in order to attain our spirituality. And so he feels that when we isolate our sexuality as a drawer that we open and shut, and many people who use sex and to get what they want and treat people as objects and look at porn and uh, just look at the superficiality of sex, what they do is they're not really understanding how our sexuality evolves as we get older and we grow. And it's our responsibility to recognize that uh, our sexuality has to grow with us. So I really love his explanation and I think it's really worth listening to the, to the uh, first uh, 30 minutes of this, uh, um, this uh, show today to really get the true right. essence of what he's talking about. I, I'm, I'm so, so I feel so honored uh, that uh, you, you, you think uh, this line of thought is, is, is of interest uh, be, be, because uh, so many people think that uh, we are today so enlightened that we shouldn't need any longer um, those uh, uh, mythologies. Um, but uh, without mythology, um, everything becomes so extremely shallow. Um, and if you are a shallow person, you also will have a shallow sex. Uh, spirit only spirituality gives depth to sexuality and rests it out of the hands of the consumer culture to whom it felt prey to. Uh, you know, um, what, what, what everyone uh, should do uh, as, as, as a first step is uh, to realize that it is a good thing to stop treating sexuality as a mere utility. Um, stop treating yourself, uh, your body, your soul, and also stop treating others like things. I think this is the primordial sin. Um, when you um, deal with people, not with fellow humans, uh, but as, as things. We, we see it everywhere. Uh, whenever people are treated uh, as things, uh, we, we are in deep trouble because we don't uh, accept that they, they have a worth. Um, and um, to, to see the value of other people, especially in, in, in sexual um, connections, um, you, you have to start to be amazed again, to be amazed what is going on in your body and in your sexual relationship. 
which is so much more than just uh, erection or lubrication and arousal and, and orgasm, which are all fine and, and we have to teach them. I, I think, Martha, you do a, such a wonderful job in, in helping people um, to, to uh, uh, accept uh, that vaginism is nothing you have uh, to accept. Um, uh, that, yeah. that, that you can overcome it very easily. This is a very, very important step because if you only um, feel that sexuality is pain and, and something uh, like, like, uh, like, like an order you have to fulfill, uh, if you, if you uh, are stuck uh, at that step, of course, uh, something like uh, the sexual aspect of uh, spirituality and the spiritual aspect of sexuality is so far beyond you uh, that uh, you you must think uh, uh, this is a speech from a lunatic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you think listeners can begin to do immediately? Based on all the things that you're saying, the words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a break in one minute. So this is something that we okay. definitely want to talk about when you come back from the break. So I, okay. I love what you're saying. I'm just going to summarize quickly. Don't treat people uh, as objects and uh, treat people as people. And um, I think that's the original sin that you mentioned, the primordial sin, which is treating people like things, not like people. And when we start doing that, and basically I, I feel in my own words, um, become less jaded about life and about what's around us and actually feel so what you're saying is be amazed again with our sexual feelings dreams lust, and the way our body works be in awe of what happens and uh, we have a break and we'll come back and uh, wrap up the show the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time for Karma Talk on Om Time Radio. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. And welcome to the last, sorry, welcome to the last 15 minutes of today's show. And um, so far today we did a really interesting show, at least in my opinion. Uh, about Aphrodite, about Greek mythology and the link with sexuality, spirituality and lust. And it's very important to really allow our sexuality to connect with the spirituality and the divine. And uh, so now I want to ask Dr. Jacob Pastata to please um, explain to us more like what listeners can begin to do to return to the sacred. Mm. I, I think that the most important thing is to um, uh, feel amazed uh, by uh, your ability to get uh, sexually aroused um, and uh, 
to realize that your genitals are there all the time. There is even uh, the uh, concept in uh, some psychological uh, traditions which uh, is confirmed by uh, development uh, uh, psychology that um, our first um, sense of who we are is uh, built by the sense which gender we are. If we are male or female or maybe uh, transgender. Um, so this this feeling of, of one's own gender identity is so much at the core of one's general identity uh, that it is a shame that uh, we hardly uh, spend a single moment uh, every day um, on thinking about us as men, women or transgender. So stop calling your genitals anything childish. Um, and uh, stop also um, calling your genitals anything medical, uh, be, be, because those are not uh, the words which inspire all. Uh, the one thing is childish, the, the other thing is too technical. Um, even something rude or obscene is better than something childish uh, or medical. But the best thing is to call it by uh, a spiritual name. Uh, so uh, call it uh, with the Indian names of Yoni uh, or Olingam, um, or uh, use uh, the, the Greek uh, word phallos, for example. And also take every day five minutes to reflect what it means for you to be a woman, a man, or a transgender. I, I don't mean to sink into self-pity, but to make yourself aware that whatever you are, uh, your genitals uh, and the feelings which are connected with them are a very important factor. Um, think about mythological women, men, or transgenders. Um, think about what it made uh, those people examples for womanhood, manhood, or even transgenderhood. Um, all the religions are, are full with examples uh, of, of people who have to develop into full women, full men, or full transgenders. Um, it's so easy with Google uh, today to find those examples. It's, it's just enough uh, one, to think about one sense, sentence, uh, even one name is enough. Uh, just keep it for a, a few moments, for, for a few seconds or for a few minutes in your mind. When you think about yourself as a man, think of a god like Zeus or think uh, uh, um, of, of a hero like, uh, uh, like, like David um, to, to, to reconnect you with who you are. Uh, for women, it is just the same. There are so many wonderful and great and powerful women um, that that uh, are part of our history, but we don't think about them. Um, so um, this is a very good start. This this isn't hard. This isn't difficult. Uh, just think about what it means to be a man, woman, or transgender. And uh, if you brave enough, uh, while you are doing that, uh, just cup your hands around your genitals. Uh, to reconnect yourself with uh, the possibilities, with the options, uh, with the power, uh, which is actually in your genitals hidden. You just have to realize uh, it again. And finally, um, uh, uh, start using some kind of mantras and prayers that engulf aspects of male and female godliness, uh, or of uh, male uh, and, and female uh, mythological heroes. Uh, this is very healing. Uh, find those aspects that work for you. And uh, very important, don't skip uh, the shadow aspects. Usually, uh, gods uh, and heroes are never just light. Uh, they are. Uh, they they always have also a shadow aspect. Uh, some some kind. Uh, we uh, some something. Uh, that, that has to be overcome. 
Greek and Indian mythology especially, but also um, Chinese mythology are helpful. But uh, also in the Bible, you find wonderful examples of manhood uh, and and uh, female femalehood. So uh, it, it's really no secret. It is really no magic. Well, uh, of course, it is magic because magic is everything which cre- you create uh, with the power uh, of your mind. Every um, what what is so often called mindfulness is actually a kind of magic. Uh, it is like uh, using a torch, um, putting um, the, the beam of the torch uh, to a certain point um, inside you or outside you that is usually not enlightened. Uh, this is uh, like, like an invocation. Um, you make it visible through the torch of your mind, and this means you integrate it. And that's also the reason why the shadow aspects are so important, uh, because, um, you know, shadows are extremely powerful, um, uh, but uh, they, they shouldn't uh, overcome you. And it is so easy to, to, to deal with shadows just by putting light uh, onto them. Actually, shadows are your friend, because when you deal with not only with the pleasures of sexuality, but also with the fears uh, that are connected with sexuality, you uh, start accepting uh, very important parts of your soul, very important parts of your identity that are usually hidden. And you will be surprised those fears that usually make you weak and make you feel anxious or make you feel angry, all of a sudden lose that power of negative feelings and enable you, uh, make you more powerful. Uh, And the the most powerful uh, thing we can become, and I I know for for, for people who are used uh, to see sexuality just as in consumers' items, it's it's a very strange concept, but the most powerful thing in the world uh, for a human being to become is to become a full sexual being. And this is the lesson uh, we can find in the Greek mythology um, where sexuality is always part of the goddess and always part of the life. And you just have to say, yes, that's good, that's fine, that's helpful, but of course, there is also a huge responsibility connected with that. Again, I know it is a a whole lot of mouthful, uh, and it is very difficult uh, to to bring it across in just a a few sentences, Um, but uh, trust me, uh, try just to concentrate every day a few moments, a few minutes on what it means to be a man, woman, transgender, and what it means to uh, have genitals. Uh, And I assure you, it will do you a whole lot of good. Okay, so so again, please, please get in touch with me. Uh, I am, uh, you can find me uh, on my Facebook um, uh, profile, Live Your Sexuality. Uh, you can find me also under my name, Jacob Passetter. Uh, you can find me under the DGSS uh, website, uh, sexology, written with IE, uh, dot org. Uh, and uh, let's become a fellow traveler uh, to discover Uh, your sexual spirituality and your spiritual sexuality. 
Beautiful. I'm I'm so so grateful for you coming on to today's show, and I'm so glad that the second time we tried, uh, managed to connect and uh, do this show today. I've learned a lot from you about the spiritual aspects of sexuality, and love what you are saying. So I just want to repeat that you're saying the use of mantras and prayers will help us to connect with the positive and negative aspects of ourselves. And when we connect with the spiritual side of ourselves, it's like the beam of a torch that allows us to illuminate, invoke, and integrate all aspects of us, including our shadow side. That it allows us, our shadow, to become actually more powerful, not lose power, but actually become more powerful when we Mm. accept all parts of ourselves and our soul and our identity. And you also said that with uh, becoming and evolving into a full sexual being, that uh, this part of our sexuality um, that is uh, useful uh, also comes with responsibility. And uh, when we become enlightened, we we go forth and be able to um, help more people, especially uh, our uh, people around us and our communities. So I I, I love all these things. I love, love, love uh, today's show. So uh, this has been Marta of Arrows Coaching, and I've been with um, Dr. Uh, Jacob Hasadha. So uh, tune in next week. In the meantime, have a great week ahead. Please share this show so more people can hear about this uh, perspective. And I love all of you, and you can always reach out to me through arrowscoaching.com. Thank you, and bye. Bye.